Hi, what's up? This is Brian Pfeiffer, the owner of SurrealNightlife.com. I'm standing here actually in front of the entrance to uh, Encore Beach. You can see the, uh, the big lit up Encore sign over here back in the light, so it's looking good. And uh, Encore Beach is uh, not what I'm going to be talking about today, but I am going to be talking about the monster nightclub that is in the Encore Hotel called Excess Nightclub. And uh, Excess has been around for uh, quite a long time, guys. We're talking, I think, at the time of this video, maybe 12 years. I know there was a year in there with the uh, survey. So things were a little bit off, but uh, for the most part, this club's been going strong for 11, 12 years now, and it's um, honestly, it's my favorite nightclub. So I'm going to devote um, this whole video to Excess Nightclub. I'm going to talk about all the things uh, that come along with buying a table, you know, getting in, that kind of stuff, so you can really understand what goes on here at Excess Nightclub. Again, it's my favorite club, so I'm going to spend a little bit out, uh, longer than my normal video on this one because it is uh, such an amazing club. I hope the music in the background isn't too loud. Um, I am here standing at the uh, the Encore front of Encore Beach, actually, which is right behind me. Through these doors is Encore Beach, and um, it, it is lively here, like on a Saturday, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then even Thursdays that we're doing here at Encore Beach. But um, access is typically open uh, just Fridays. Saturdays and Sundays, okay? At one time they were doing a Monday party, but that has since uh, been uh, stopped, and now they're just focusing in on the, the three nights, and um, it's good, all three nights. Uh, Fridays are, you know, slam, Saturdays are slam. Sundays are usually pretty darn good, depending on who they book for a DJ. This time of year, I'm filming this in November, it's a little bit uh, light, you know, obviously November and December here is kind of the lighter months, but um, they do have um, a great roster of uh, artists here at the uh, Encore Win, Win Nightlight books them. They're the uh, management company that operates the two venues here. You know, Encore Beach and uh, Access are kind of like sister club and, you know, sister club and pool. Uh, a lot of the hosts work at both and whatnot, so uh, myself included, I book tables at Encore Beach, Encore Beach at night, and then um, Access. Okay, it's all the same company. Now, just a little history about this place. Uh, Steve Wynn used to operate this. Um, hotel. He's since stepped down. He's no longer with the uh, Wynn organization anymore. It's now run as a public traded company. It's a big operation. Um, they do have a really good uh, booking talent team here. Uh, some of the big hitters they still have on the roster are the Chainsmokers. Uh, they have Kygo. They have Alesso. Uh, Diplo is one of the big hitters. Um, trying to think who else. Um, Dylan Francis is doing pretty good. That guy Griffin, he's co come on pretty big now. He's, he's actually um, one of the bigger hitters now. Um, they have R.L. Grime. Um, and then, like tonight, they just have kind of a smaller artist, a scam artist, DJ5. Okay, that's some of the nights they book um, smaller guys, like on a Sunday, if it's not going to be a big weekend or anything. Now, they are going to be putting up a um, hotel directly across the street. Is Las Vegas Boulevard right over here? And they're actually building right in front of the Trump Tower here. They're going to be building Win West. They already started construction on that. So, Win West is going to have like a some kind of you know walkway or tunnel or something going over to the wind from this wind to that wind and uh, I'm certain they're gonna put another big pool or nightclub over there uh, maybe retire something over here who knows uh, but I would imagine they're gonna have something big going up over there they're not gonna build a brand new hotel and probably not put some kind of new nightclub or some kind of big uh, you know pool over there in my, in my guess okay so we'll see what happens here in the next couple of years but uh, for now we're gonna focus in on just access um, so let's talk a little bit about uh, you know getting into this place. Uh, they do have like um, tickets on one area, then they have like a guest list system, which is generally on the other side of the hotel, the other side of the encore. They come in through the back, through the outside, and then they have like the uh, the table entry. Okay, and uh, they do have an expedited ticket entry, which is kind of like the. Um, where some of the tables come in now too. At one time, uh, at the front of Excess, they had like an uh, expedited table entry, uh, but lately they haven't been putting that up. So now they just have the one table entry and then a lot of times I'll bring my customers through the expedited entry, which is more for like the ticket people, but um, the hosts do run over there and bring tables in through there. So um, generally for my customers, I'm able to bring them in through the, the expedited entry. And um, you know, sometimes it's not that slammed in the table area, so I just bring, them, bring people through there too. As long as, you know, I'm gonna go through the quickest way and get you guys in as fast as possible when you book a table, okay? So uh, I book a ton of tables here. This is uh, my number one venue, personally my favorite venue. Uh, I think one of the reasons why this is such a, a favorite venue of mine, and I've told people this many times, one of the reasons that I enjoy this club so much compared to some of the other clubs is that you're able to like actually have a conversation with somebody inside the club, which is money. And then they also have the outside area, which they have a casino gaming pavilion, which is kind of unique to every other club in Vegas. And then they have an outside bar area, which is very nice in the summer, especially. It's warm. You can talk to 
to people, the music's not too loud. Um, you know, one of the nice things about going to a nightclub, in my opinion, is the, the social aspect of it, okay? I like to talk to people, I like to meet girls, I like to meet, you know, friends, whatever, and have a conversation with them where I'm not having to, like, scream in their ear and, like, you know, <laughs> blow out their eardrums just to talk to them. So that's one thing I think that Access has, it, like, a big club like Omnia or Zook, some of the competition here, they, they have that, you know, mega club feel. Don't get me wrong, they're nice clubs, but it's so freaking loud inside, it's hard to have a conversation, all right? Now, Omnia does have a terrace outside, so you can actually go outside and have a conversation. But Zook, you're kind of stuck in this loud, you know, big square room, and you can't really talk to anybody. It's hard. It's hard to have a conversation. So I think that's one of the big secrets of why Access is still going for so long. In my personal opinion, so it's a great party. It's a great vibe, and you can actually have a conversation. All right. So let's talk a little bit about uh, getting into this place. Uh, you know, like I said, you have different options. The guest list is, um, you know, usually ladies free. Guys are either free or uh, they have to pay uh, some kind of cover if it's a big artist. And then uh, you can buy tickets. Okay, ladies and guys can buy tickets. That's going to be a quicker entry uh, than the guest list typically. And then they have an upgraded ticket, which is like an expedited ticket. That's going to be a very quick entry. You just walk up and just walk right in. But you're going to pay a premium for that. Okay, that's your expedited ticket entry. And then... Uh, now, as far as tables go, okay, um, like I said, they have a couple of ways to get in. I'll bring you through the fastest way, obviously, if you book with me, we'll make sure you get well taken care of. And, um, you know, dress code, guys, this is a very upscale hotel. Wynn is arguably the best hotel, and uh, Wynn Encore is arguably the best hotel on the Strip. Uh, maybe competes with, like, the Cosmo, the Bellagio, the Aria, those are, like, the high-end hotels around here, the resorts world now. And, um, you know, you're going to have very nice-looking people here and very upscale, very wealthy people here that stay here typically. So you're going to want to dress the part when you come over here to the Wynn, okay? Make sure you have like, you know, nice shirt, um, you know, nice jeans, no ripped jeans, no baggy clothes, no athletic gear, no gym shoes. You can wear like the nicer high end like Yeezys and Louis Vuittons and Louboutin shoes. Oh, those are okay for guys, uh, even though they might kind of look like sneakers, but they're, you know, $1,400 sneakers. Okay, those are okay. All right, so let's get into, um, you know, the fun stuff here while you're probably watching this video is the bottle service. And as I talk about the bottle service in excess, I'm going to kind of flash up the tables and tell you a little bit about each section. Like I said, this is uh, my number one club and I'm definitely gonna um, you know, keep booking a lot of tables here, so I'll look forward to working with you at Access. All right, so let's start with the uh, the lowest end in the, in the main room. We'll go from the low to high in the, uh, in the main room and then we'll, we'll go outside after that. All right, now the first uh, entry level tables are, are what's called your four top tables, okay? These tables are Generally designed for, for four top means four people, but you can usually squeeze six people on a four top table. And there's a couple tables that I book very often, uh, table 310 and table 410, which are also considered four top tables, but you can have a group of like even eight to 10 at those tables because they're, it's a smaller bench, but there's area around it to all hang out. So not everyone's gonna be able to sit down at once. You can sit up on the ledge, maybe sit about five to six people, and then the rest of the people can kind of stand around. But um, they are in a high traffic area, 310 and 410 face the bar. And almost every weekend, in fact, last night I booked 310, last weekend I booked 310, Almost every weekend I book either 310 or 410 uh, for one of my customers because they get the price of the four top table and then you can bring a little extra people in and you get a great table in a high traffic area. Okay, it's great for meeting women, uh, that kind of stuff. Or women if you're meeting guys, vice versa. Okay? So that's your four tops. Now there are some uh, couple of stripper poles on each side, like kind of like dancer areas, and there are some four top tables scattered around those. Uh, generally, those are... Um, I don't book those too often, okay, because they are uh, usually taken by, there's a couple like independent hosting companies that kind of grab those every weekend, and uh, they, they give them the, you know, one of them is used to, like for the promoter table and whatnot. Um, but here and there, I, I do book them, so there are some other four top tables around the stripper poles um, on both sides of the, the venue now. Uh, the next level up is going to be your back wall table, okay? The back wall tables are good for, you know, six to eight people can sit. You can bring in ten on a back wall table, but not everyone's going to be able to sit at once, okay? So some people are going to have to stand. Um, you can sit up on the ledge, you can maybe fit eight people if it's women, maybe nine or ten if it's all women, okay, because it's they're not that big of tables, but they are elevated, you get a nice view of the, uh, the DJ from the back wall, and, uh, you know, those, those are like up against the back wall looking at the DJ, okay, so those tables, you know, they can they can range, um, some nights are pretty reasonably priced, and other nights they get ridiculously priced, if the chain smokers are here, or, you know, Kygo or Alesso or one of those big DJs is here, they get pretty expensive. All right, so from the back wall then, there's right in front of them, there's a little walkway, and then there's the third row tables. Okay, your third row tables are um, basically the same size. The small third rows are the same size as the back walls, but they're on floor level, so they're not elevated. 
elevated really above like the lower and upper and lower dance floor. So one of the drawbacks to the third row is you're in a high traffic area. That's a, that's one of the pluses. The drawback is it's kind of hard to see the DJs when all the um, people on the second you know the second tier and the dance floor tables are standing up. They're kind of like same level as them, so they're kind of blocking your view a little bit. Okay, but they're still good tables. All right, and then there's um, two. There's actually four what we call big brown tables. Uh, these are the large third row tables. When you walk into the club from the entrance of the very front to the right and the left, there's four big brown tables, two on the right, two on the left. And those are actually some of my favorite tables in the club. I really do like those tables for bigger groups. You can have up to like 20 people on those tables. And uh, they're in a high traffic area. You can stand on the ledge and see the DJ. They are, again, floor level, same as the upper and lower dance floor. So the view is a little obstructed when you're standing on floor level. But if you're standing on the ledge, you can see. And uh, they're great for like meeting people because there's tons of traffic behind and in front. And they're, they're just a great play table to meet people at. All right, so I really do like those large, uh, big brown tables. Now, uh, in the main um, horseshoe, if you will, there's the upper dance floor tables and then the lower dance floor tables. Okay, the upper dance floor tables, um, the two in the center are considered like the owner t owner's tables. The one on the left is bigger than the one on the right, but the one on the left is used to be called Jesse's table. It used to be uh, Jesse Waits. He used to always have that table. So they used to call it Jesse's table, but now it's just the owner's table. Okay, Steve Wynn would occasionally come in and sit at that table as well. Um, but the <clears throat> right and the left end upper dance floor tables are the largest two tables in the club. So if you have a group of like 25, um, you're going to want one of those big ones on that very end because they're the only two tables that can really accommodate up to like 25 people. Uh, a couple of the upper dance floor tables really only accommodate maybe 10, 15 people tops, and then the, uh, the two on the end are bigger. They can, they can accommodate more. So then um, you got your lower dance floor tables. Now the lower dance floor tables are all the same size. Okay, they're exactly the same size. I believe there's four on the right, four on the left. Um, and the ones in the center are usually, they get a little bit more of a premium for those. Those are the um, upper and lower dance floor tables. So, uh, obviously the, the best tables arguably in the club are the lower dance floor tables. Some people like the upper dance floor tables because there's more traffic. The lower dance floor is just the people on the dance floor. There's really not a lot of flow down there, okay? Once they get on the dance floor, they kind of just stand there. Uh, in the back of the upper dance floor tables, there's a lot of flow. People are going back and forth, bathrooms and whatnot. So maybe you can meet more people on the upper dance floor tables than the lower dance floor tables. If you've got a self-contained group, you probably want a lower dance floor table. Now, there are some premium tables to the right and to the left of the DJ. Those are like the stage tables, uh, if you will, or DJ booth tables, I think they call them. And those are really popular and they're really expensive. If you want to be right next to the DJ, that's kind of considered like a VIP area to the right and the left. And there's usually some high rollers up there and usually a lot of pretty girls to the right and the left of the DJ. Now, behind the DJ, there's also um, two rows of tables that are, one's elevated and then the other one's kind of like a little bit lower, like floor level. And those are considered like stage tables and those are pretty prime as well. The only issue is you're kind of facing the back of the DJ. Um, so on the Friday and Saturday nights, you're actually looking at the DJ's backside, but on Sunday nights when the DJ faces outside for the night swim, you're actually right in front of the DJ. So those could be even better tables on Sunday nights. All right. Um, and then you also have some what are called immediate patio tables. I think there's three on the right and three on the left that can maybe accommodate 10 people. Uh, those are also pretty nice tables. And then there's some smaller like four top tables outside um, that I used to book fairly often, but more often I'm booking the tables inside uh, lately because you're kind of like still considered a VIP and inside on those outside tables, but um, they're actually facing away from the DJ, facing outside, and they are outside. Okay? Uh, but those are pretty good tables as well. That, that whole area behind the DJ is roped off, and in order to get into that area, you have to have a table. So it's kind of considered like the VIP table area, if you will. It's very popular. Okay. So that's basically like all your prime tables inside and then right around the DJ. Now there's another area that's kind of really considered prime, and that's the um, that's called the um, the platform. Okay, they have a platform now that bridges the gap between the casino area and the DJ, and that area is um, also considered prime. Those tables get pretty darn expensive on big DJ nights as well. They get a premium for those. The big issue on that there's a lot of action out there, but you are the DJ's facing inside, so you're looking at the DJ's backside. Okay, it is what it is. Those those tables are really good but um, on Sundays they get rid of the platform and then that's your like night swim party. And the night swim party is uh, is rocking and the DJ usually faces outside on most Sundays. Now on the big weekends like Memorial Day and Labor Day sometimes the DJ actually faces inside. Um, you just have to ask me what the, whether they're going to have the DJ. Sometimes they don't even know until the day of how they're going to do the, the DJ whether he's going to face inside or outside. 
holiday weekends, I would pretty much safely assume the DJ will face inside because that's where your bigger spenders will be. Now, the other tables outside, um, you have this area in front of the bar called the, uh, I call it the 719 area, table 719, and there's um, a handful of like really good tables right in front of the bar there that's in a high traffic area. A lot of people like to hang out at that bar on the right when you walk out, and uh, I book those tables a lot in the summer. Okay, you can get them for a couple bottle minimum, you get a nice table in a high traffic area. I really like those tables in the summer. Um, there's also the tables around the pool. Those are called the day beds, the poolside day beds, and those day beds are um, usually a little bit more expensive than the 719 area because they're bigger and get a little bit better view. You kind of have your own area that's typically roped it off and then you kind of treat your area like a VIP area, if you will. Um, I do like the poolside day beds, especially on the night swim. Those are really awesome. Those are the best tables in the club on the pool on the poolside day beds on the night swim party because you're right next to the pool where there's a ton of action. You got your own VIP area. Sell a ton of those. Now there are some tables. Um, if you're I'm trying to think that best describe it here, if you're on the other side from the the main bar outside, there's um, a, a row of tables, um, kind of just um, in the big circle. It's a big circle, if you will, and those are like less prime tables. And then there's an area called the lawn, and those tables um, are a little bit less money than the 719 area. Typically, in the 719 area, you're gonna have to tip to get in that area, and then maybe it's like 1k minimums to get over to that other side or to the um, get a lawn table, which is kind of out there in what I call no man's land. Um, I really never book tables in the uh, lawn area if I can avoid it. It's not that great of an area, personally. Now, there are um, some other tables on the outside area. Of note, there's a couple ta tables right in front of the, uh, the gaming area. Uh, they're right in the center of the action. Those are really good for night swim. Um, obviously, when the platform's up, those tables are um, connect right on the edge of the platform that connects the you know the casino to the uh, to the club. And then the um, then there's also the lower cabanas. Okay, I think there's I want to say maybe eight lower cabanas on the right hand side. And those are big and roomy. Those are good for groups of like say 15 or 20 people. Uh, the lower cabanas I really do like for the night swim party, and they can be pretty good on the regular parties uh, when it's not super hot outside. And then uh, on top of the lower cabanas, there's a row of upper cabanas, and then there's another row of upper cabanas along the main bar outside, okay? And the upper cabanas don't get sat that often. Now, on the night swim parties, when it's really busy, they'll seat them, and on a really big night, like a holiday weekend, Memorial Day Liberty, they'll seat the upper cabanas, okay? So, well, but not every night can you get an upper cabana. I mean, the, the, a lot of times, just move them down to the lower cabanas or one of the tables on the floor if uh, they don't have enough people to seat the uh, upper cabanas. All right, so the, one thing I did forget to mention, like the dress code on the night swim party is a uh, very, um, you know, pool, obviously. You want to dress like a shorts so or a tank top is fine. Gym shoes is okay. Um, but you can dress in club because the inside of the club is usually open as well. So a lot of people wear normal club attire on Sunday nights as well. So people ask me, you know, what should I wear? I'm like, well, you can really wear whatever you want. You can wear night swim uh, pool attire, like, you know, good, good looking pool attire, or you can go like club on Sunday nights in the summertime. Okay, the night swim typically is open from May till September, and then they just move the party inside on Sundays for the winter. It looks like that's what they're going to do from here on out, hopefully. All right? So, uh, again, I am very, uh, <laughs> been booking tables at Excess since it opened. We're talking 12 years now. Uh, it is my number one table booking place of all places in Vegas. So my number is above, 773-459-8133. Uh, just hit me up with any questions you have. I do have links below that have the menu pricing, which is really expensive here, by the way. Uh, bottle prices start, I think, at $7.95 and up. So it's not cheap. And then uh, I actually think $7.25 and up now. Uh, they, they pretty much use the holiday menu year-round now. It's kind of funny. And then um, I do have, like, a 3D map on my website so you can go check out click around you can actually see the tables um, and whatnot you know you can actually see them kind of in you know 3d where, where they actually are and, and whatnot so just let me know what you guys are interested in I do have a table number map as well um, on the events section where you can see the pricing for the tables and uh, you can click on there and kind of you know ask me about specific tables now I can't guarantee you typically specific tables but a lot of times I can get you exactly what you need okay usually when I say I'm gonna get 310 or 410 I get 310 or 410 okay because we book a lot of tables here so we make things happen all right so hopefully you guys enjoyed my vlog today on access make sure you like this video subscribe to the channel and um, I'm looking forward to working with you at XS Nightclub in the future. Talk soon. I'm Brian Pfeiffer. Bye.